So when we are debating about integrating climate-related risks into banks' capital requirements, we can actually follow two different approaches. One would be the risk approach, and the second one would be the economic policy approach. In the first approach, the risk approach, climate change is actually a new source of risk to banks because it can affect banks' cash flows or devaluate their capital. That means that climate change can actually be a threat to the stability of each bank. And for this reason, climate-related risks need to be taken into consideration when you do the credit risk assessment and consequently when you calculate the capital requirement of that bank. So this is the idea behind, behind the risk approach. The second approach actually emerged uh, because nowadays we have insufficient investments in green activities and at the same time we have too many investments in carbon intensive projects. So that means we could use the capital requirement as a policy tool to allocate credits towards uh, a transition to a low carbon economy. So for example, um, we have two different projects a coal power plant and we have also a solar farm. So if we tell the banks that for the solar farm they do not need to have such a big mattress, such a big capital requirement to make this investment, this green project would become more profitable for them and will incentivize them to go forward with it. At the same time, uh, capital requirement adjustment can also be a penalization tool. So in the coal power plant, for example, um, if we also tell the banks that for that kind of investment they will need a bigger capital requirement, a bigger mattress, this investment would not be so interesting anymore. It would not be so profitable, it may be less profitable than the solar farm.